This video was brought to you by Marcus Beal, Elbil Mac, Abadur Planner, Stoltenberg, Camp Power, and Beal Componente. Oh man, we are at Yalo, but we are down to 3.5%. We have 70 kilowatt power limit, and we still have to go two more kilometers. There is no indicated range left. This is so freaking scary, man. <laughs> it's 2.30 at night. I don't want to run out of juice over here. Shit, come on, come on, come on. You have to go a little bit more. A little bit more, 3.5%. 3%? Nine! Don't die. Don't die, come on, come on. Two kilometers left. Shit, there's no indicator range left. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh no, no, what's this? What's this? Uphill. Don't die now, don't die now. I have turtle mode. What the heck is going on here? Come on, come on, come on, don't die now. 3% left. Oh no, it's the. Oh, come on. Can the hill stop? It's still uphill, got 2.5%. Yo, what's up? Behind me here you see Kia Soul 27 kilowatt hour from Elbil Mac. And today I want to retest the trip to Yale because last time it was winter, okay, that was one thing. And then last time we didn't use the adapter. So I wonder, you know, when I tested recently the 500 km challenge, it replicated when you use the adapter because it charges faster and then builds more heat. So I just want to know when you drive more B roads, not more way hammering all the way, will it also overheat over we just have more normal battery temperatures? And also last time we did it in three hours and 35 minutes. Can we go faster than before? You know, Valdemar, he wants to beat the classic Ionic, but that was in 500 km challenge. We couldn't beat the classic Ionic. Maybe we can do it this time because classic Ionic to Yalo, uh, it was quite cold. <laughs> <laughs> so, alright, I'm getting ready now. I'm charging back to 100%. It was at 99.5%. So, I will show you now. Wait, wait, where's the adapter? I have to get the adapter ready. Um, it is down here. So, if you guys don't know, here is this adapter that allows you, okay, it's from EV Nicholas. It allows you to charge on CCS and therefore unlocking 66 kilowatt roughly. Yeah. Uh, the car actually supports that much, but it's just that when you're charging on Chardemo, most places in well around Norway, you only get 50 kilowatt. So let's see. I'm gonna keep it ready inside here, and also we have the emergency box. Oh yeah. <laughs> so that is for triggering fan speed nine. But let me see. Are we done now, or is this 100%? Uh, I'm not sure when it will say that we are finished. But okay. Anyway. All right. Here's the plan. I'm gonna go all the way to Yalu. And then I've checked a better planner. A better planner estimates that it's gonna take uh, three and a half hours or something. Let me double check here. I have the better planner here, but I also checked it beforehand uh, on the computer. Yeah, let me see. Yeah, it suggests a couple of places. And it claims that it will take three hours and 38 minutes and that the consumption will be. Uh, 191 watt hour per kilometer. Okay, we can see if a bit of plan is correct or not. So I think I'll just wait a couple of more minutes and then off we go. Well, we're on the move. We started at uh, 10.55. So you see, this is the setting I'm going to be using this time. So unlike the 1,000, I mean, the 500 kilometer challenge uh, where I was freezing in the car, this time I actually have a HVAC uh, heating the cabin. And then we go at uh, 88 kilometers per hour. We go 10% over the speed limit, which is what the trucks do anyway. And you see that battery, we start at around 20 degrees Celsius. So it's going to heat up, but uh, not too crazy heat up. That's good. I also use um, driver only, you see there. So driver only will try to heat up only the driver's side. And that means that the other side of the event here, it will not get uh, the heat stuff in it. So. Hopefully, we can avoid overheating the battery. So the reason why I want to try this is also that I want to try to drive the car in a more normal way to see if that, that adapter over here will cause things to overheat or not. So it is an expensive uh, piece of equipment, but uh, I believe that uh, in more normal driving, depending on where you drive, of course, the adapter should help you greatly without uh, you know, without the thermal being uh, a bottleneck. But we'll find out for the whole challenge, or for the whole trip now, how it goes. Uh, 
we are now near Hörnefoss and the normal detour from the main road, I just follow it as normal, but suddenly I saw that the detour was closed. So it means that we have to waste a couple of extra minutes here. Oh, fog. Yeah, oh, wait, go, wait, wait, wait. Maybe they finally fixed it, which means that I didn't pay attention. Yeah, yeah I think they already fixed it, man. Shit. How long did it take? Five minutes, I think. We can check at the checkpoint. Yeah. Okay, so this is a normal route we would take, <laughs> uh, which is finally open again. It has been shut down for six months or so. So, okay. Uh, just wait, okay, let's just check once we are at the roundabout. Okay, we are here now. This is the reference point. So normally it would take 55 minutes to go from Yes Home to this roundabout. And now it has taken uh, 57 minutes. Wait, is it, uh, it seems like it's going to tick over to 58 minutes. Right around, uh, yeah, soon, but let's see. Yeah, this is also weird, man. I have to put HVAC to 24 degrees Celsius, otherwise it would be too cold. There, yeah, okay, see, okay. So we have to deduct three minutes, all right? That sounds about right. Now we hammer it. Uh, we just passed VMA, which is a hypercharger we uh, were supposed to charge at, but the adapter, over here failed to work or I don't know it just it started charging for a split second and it stopped again so uh, this has happened before which is unfortunate because that would be my best place to stop and charge so we have to drive further down the road uh, until we get to another location Sokna but over there they have Delta chargers and I have not been able to charge successfully on them with the adapter but I can use this Chalmo over there and the Chandamo actually gives me 133 amp which is not the worst deal at least we are now at the uh, Sokna and okay I, this time I have to deduct some time okay in the previous stop I'm not sure uh, if we should deduct three minutes or not not uh, maybe I'll just deduct two minutes to be fair I lost around three minutes on the previous stop because for some reason the charger didn't work even though it was a Delta I mean it was a an Alpitronic that should work and then I was previously parked over there and I tried whatever I tried it was just acting really weird this charger it, it claimed there was a message here somewhere it, it claimed that there was some limitation on the grid or some shit like huh what as soon as I move over here it worked so at least the Delta I mean sorry the adapter works with Delta charger at least this type of Delta charger so uh, uh, yeah okay so Right, let's get inside the car and I can show that. Oh yeah, we're taking 172 amp, 63. You see, at this point, when the battery is that kind of cold, there's no point running the fan speed at nine. Once we hit around 40 degrees, especially 45 degrees, then you want to run the fan speed. So it is as if the car has already been programmed to not waste any energy trying to cool down something that cannot be cooled down. So, all right, and then, so the next stop is going to be Bromma. And I can show you here. I think I should use a weather replant more. So if I zoom in there, Bruma, they have YX station with dirt cheap electricity, and it makes sense to also stop there. And over here, a weather replant claims that I'm going to spend 55%. I did my own calculation. I'm not sure if I want to bother you guys with it. I claim I will spend 54%. So if we agree, then. I think that's that makes sense. So that means that if we charge to around, we need a margin. We need to charge to at least 65%, maybe even 75 just to be safe. Then we can go, yeah. And that shouldn't take more than around maybe five, 10 more minutes. Wait, what the heck? We are almost good to go. <laughs> and it took only, yeah, less than eight minutes. Okay, let's get ready to leave. Wait, is it? Oh, it's starting to a little bit. Uh, interesting, now it actually throttles because the battery is too cold. Okay, but let's go then. Right, so now we are hammering it again. And uh, you see that the battery heated up to 32 to 7, 30, 37 degrees Celsius. And now without modifying stuff, then the fan speed wants to be 3. So, and then inlet is 23. Well, because we have a heater on the cabin. So now I'm actually using the car more or less like normal, except for that, uh, yeah, um, we have the adapter 
so I don't want to do any crazy cool down yet. We um, we actually want the battery to be warmer on the next session so we get a flatter curve. We are now at Bromma and uh, yeah, again I had handshake problems over there. I tried the Uno X chargers. They actually cost only one nook per kilowatt hour, nine euro cent per kilowatt hour, but uh, it failed. I tried two, three, three times I tried and I wasted five minutes. So I'm going to deduct five minutes because I could have gone here, straight here. I was trying to save some money, but uh, here it works because we have the Eon charger with native Chadomo 200 amp. So yeah, I mean, if I was just going for the, for the run, you know, I could have gone here first, but because I purchased such an expensive mansion with a pool and a heated insulated garage, then I have to save as much money as possible. So this charging here costs roughly five times more than the over there. And I'll be saving on this charging session, I'll be saving around one euro. So every euro counts. <laughs> but let's see what's going on inside the car now. Oh yeah, look at this. By the way, we arrived at 20%, which is spot on with what Abed Rupin I claim and also what I claim, the Ninja. But uh, yeah, now we're getting maximum speed and I crank up the fan to nine. So we're getting some cooling here. I think this is good enough. I could of course go all ninja and then fire up the car and then run the you know, HVAC at lower setting. Uh, but in, in 21 degrees is still okay. So I don't want to freeze too much here. So doing just, just a small hack to uh, keep the temperature at bay, but uh, we should not overheat and we should also get the best charging speed now. And since everything is closed over here at night, uh, then we brought our own food, so no problem there. Oh, some salad. Mm. And some bread. Mm. Okay, you see, now we are at uh, fan speed nine, but we, if we turn off this thing, we can see that the car wants to run the fan speed at, um, wait for it, four only. What the heck? No, 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 go to nine. This is where I think the car is being a bit too stingy and it will allow the car to rapid gate. So you want to run in a nine because I think it helps even though uh, inlet is a bit low, but yeah, we have to crank it up to nine there. Okay. And interesting, now we have to drive quite long, like 80 kilometers with uphill. And I believe the planner claims that we can make it there and spend 70%. Uh, so if I go to 85%, we should have enough margin. Yeah, because at 85, it will start going slow. Still now, you see, battery temperature is perfect. So we still don't replicate yet. Yeah, we're throttle now to 15 kilowatt. Now it's time to leave. And you see, 14 minute driving stop only. <laughs> oh, nice. We are back on the road again. That was 16 minute driving stop. I charged two minutes extra at 15 kilowatt just to have that margin, but uh, it is still a good deal so we can avoid having to top up one more time because of handshake and, and the exit and whatever. But uh, the battery has now heated up to 35 to 45 degrees Celsius. And you see that by default, the car wants to run the fan speed at seven. Uh, I'm not sure if cranking it to nine would make any difference. So I'll just keep it at seven for now. So yeah, and then we are, wait, time-wise, we have to count uh, 1.30 at night and then plus 50 minutes. So we are currently at uh, two hours and, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah no, that doesn't make sense. Two hours and uh, uh, 21 minutes now. And we're trying to beat three hours and 35 minutes, which is the old record. So we'll see. I feel like we still have a good time tonight. We are now in Gaul and uh, the temperature on the battery has cooled down. It was 35 to 45. It's now 30 to 42, but I cranked up the fan speed to nine. So it seems to help a little bit, but it seems like what helps the most is that we are driving so slow compared to the 500 kilometer challenge. So uh, look at that. Consumption is 174 watt hour per kilometer, despite that we have gone uphill and it is cold outside, eight degrees only. Wow, this car is efficient, man. It has heat pump, yeah, I remember. So, um, let's see then, we are now 52 kilometers away from Yalo. We are getting close to Yalo, and uh, this is the scary part because we ha still have 10 kilometers left to go, but we have the uphills coming now. <laughs> And we have 21 kilometers gum 
and 17.5% left, but we're gonna lose a lot of percent going uphill now. So let's hope that a better route plan is right and uh, my own calculation is also right. <laughs> so we don't run out of juice because this is the last, I mean, we just passed the last uh, bailout point. From now on, we either run out of juice or we, uh, 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 I don't know, yeah, make it there. Oh man, we are at yellow, but we are down to 3.5%. We have 70 kilowatt power limit and we still have to go two more kilometers. There is no indicated range left. This is so freaking scary, man. <laughs> it's 2.30 at night. I don't want to run out of juice over here. Shit, come on, come on, come on. You have to go a little bit more. A little bit more, 3.5%. 3%? Nine? Don't die. Don't die, come on, come on. Two kilometers left. She there's no indicator range left. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Oh no, no, was it was it uphill? Don't die now. Don't die now. I have turtle mode. What the heck is going on here? Come on, come on, come on, don't die now. 3% left. Oh no! It's the oh come on. Can the hill stop? It's still uphill. 2.5%! Because the, this car might die at 1%. I never gone this deep before. I've gone to 2%, but I've not gone beyond 2%. Oh shit. Come on, 60 kilowatt power limit. Oh. I, I turn off the 8-rack to save some energy. But come on, come on, come on. There's a little bit of flat out and then we just have to roll up into the charger now. Ah oh, man, I should have charged one extra minute. One extra minute with a bit of, oh, 2%. This is, as deep as I went during 500 kilometer challenge. Uh, but the problem is that 2% here was 1% on the chem power one that, once I plugged in. So that's why I'm, I don't trust it. Uh, the car could die any moment right now. It's an old battery. Well, actually, no, it's not the old battery. Okay, okay, okay. There. Charge is right over there. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, don't die, don't die, don't die, don't die. Uh, okay, okay. We can look at the power limit. Uh, as long as we have some power limit and not five kilowatt, then we should be fine, right? Come on, come on, come on. Two percent, two percent. The car says 400 meters away. Right now, I'm not too concerned about time. Oh shit, 1.5%. Oh, shit, shit, shit. This is basically the zero mile test. <laughs> come on, come on. Oh, there's Circle K. There's Circle K. Oh, shit, shit. Come on, pull out, pull out. Oh, oh man. I made it here. Oh, shit. Now, which charger do I do? Do I take one of these? Okay, let's let's place it here. Okay, in case the car dies. But time, time, 231. Minus, uh, plus 50 minutes. We made it here in uh, three hours and... 20 minutes, oh, 15 minute uh, improvement. And then consumption was 182. But okay, we need to plug in now. We are charging. This is why I was so scared. It displayed 1% here, <laughs> but it, it is work actually working on this ABB charger with the adapter. Yeah, okay. Oh man, we are safe. So now I can uh, shoot a thumbnail maybe like this, like I normally do. And then we have to plan the return trip already. Oh yeah, we're getting maximum speed. Battery is not overheating yet. It will overheat at 45 or 46 degrees Celsius. But I can show you that if I turn off the box, it will drop the fan speed. It will drop, um, okay, wait a bit. Four only, what the heck man, four, nine, go to nine. You know, if Valdemar would uh, make this smaller and maybe uh, manufacture them for selling to Ionic, I, I don't know. Uh, we need to test if this works for Ionic, classic Ionic, but I have a perfect name for it. We should call it the Nine Box. <laughs> All right, back on the road again. <laughs> Where's this, the quick pit stop? We charged for nine minutes at Yellow, and now we're heading uh, back down again. So. Battery has heated up, but you see, we still haven't overheated. We have gained the maximum speed on every charging session so far. Yeah, 
So uh, what's gonna happen on the way down, on the way back? Well, we will see. Uh, but I charged it only around 50-ish percent and uh, yeah, the car claims uh, 65 kilometers of range, but uh, we are going downhill and we're going to cool. So on the way back now, okay, I'm not gonna slow poke. I will still go over the speed limit, um, but um, I will try to maybe, maybe optimize for charging cost and try to save some juice and save money by going on the cheap chargers. Like, yeah, there's Uno X at Ghoul that costs one nook per kilowatt hour. We are now at Ghoul. I'm gonna try again the cheap chargers. This is usually what happens it will start and then it stops immediately. This has happened so many times lately now. But uh, the price is really good, you see. We're talking about one nook per kilowatt hour. So, I don't know how many times I'm supposed to try this before, <laughs> before I give up. Okay, it failed again, whatever. Uh, I'll give up. I'm gonna go to the old Ghoul supercharger. That's V2 supercharger, that should work better. So, uh, well, it's a bummer. It would be nice to get some cheap electricity here. Yeah. So uh, uh, I think there's nothing wrong with these chargers, it's just that the adapter I have here is somewhat unreliable. Now we are at uh, the Ghoul supercharger, good old Ghoul, and I heard a click click. Well, this is a bit strange. I'm getting only 164 amp. Uh, yeah, not sure. Um, why we're not getting 172 amps like previously. Uh, the battery is not overheating. Well, or is it? Nah. Okay, whatever. This is good enough. Okay, now I throttle. For some reason, I got 10 amp lower than normal. So, okay, whatever. See here? We charge for <laughs> about 12 minutes only, and we're good to go. And next stop is going to be... Let me see here, I prepared it for you. Wait, I don't know why the heck it zoom out like that all the time. A better plan, guys. You have, have to zoom it in better like this, yeah. So I don't have to do it every time. But the uh, next stop is going to be Supercharger Goodspeak. I think we give up the whole uh, Unix cheap charging. And um, a better route planner claims we need to spend 44% of the battery. 61 kilometers, okay? Okay, let's go, let's go. Now it's almost four at night and it's bright already. So yeah, I charged to a little bit over 80% by the time I managed to pull out in time. But uh, this time the battery is at 46 degrees. We still run the nine box. So uh, we'll see. Next stop, 61 kilometers away. What's gonna happen with the battery temperature? It seems like these, <laughs> these roads, you know, where we have 60 zone, they actually cool down the battery a lot. So yeah, so far so good. There's the church at uh, Gore. What the heck is it called again, that church? Uh, Ghoul Church? Let me see, let me see. There's a sign here usually that says... No, I don't know. I don't know what that church is called. Ghoul Kirke, maybe. We are now at Supercharger Ghoulsvik, charging up. And it worked with handshake first time. I also noticed that the Tesla Supercharger, they are quite quick at responding during handshake. And then it just boils down to how fast the cars respond. But there is another weird thing I noticed. I wonder if this was also the case during the 500 kilometer challenge at Brummendal which is that um, we don't get 172 amp. It seems like all the superchargers <laughs> with the adapter gives me only 163 amp-ish. So, yeah, small disadvantage, but uh, I'll take it because uh, the charging is cheap and we have plenty of stalls and it is stable. Okay, we've been charging for a while. I'm not sure how long, but uh, I think we are almost good to go, but I'm gonna show you something here. Uh, in the live stream now, uh, there's been a guy. Um, uh, okay, wait, huh? Toxic? Okay, sorry. <laughs> this is, okay, there's a guy here. He claims that wheelbase, long wheelbase cars, they have better efficiency than short wheelbase car. And, and yeah, he claimed that uh, the soul here has short wheelbase. That's why it is somewhat inefficient. I'm like, huh? Wheelbase has nothing to do with efficiency. And he says that, yeah, uh, how drag increases faster and higher speed. And that, uh, well, he had some explanation. Uh, but yeah, so 
I don't know, I'm gonna ask the main channel. Uh, there might not be that many people watching, maybe 5,000 people, at least that's more than 49 people looking at the chat, live stream chat right now, but do you, can you guys explain then? It's true, right? Because this group guy, he looked up on ChatGPT and ChatGPT told him that long wheelbase cars, they are more efficient than short, short wheelbase cars. So, what, huh? So if I took uh, this car, this sole, and I stretch out the wheelbase, it would be more efficient? Really? Okay. Okay, over to something more interesting. From here, I want to stop at Shellrua, and that is 81 kilometers away, but we have 90 zone here. We have 90 zone here. So the car, I mean, sorry, um, I bet the route planner claims that I'm going to spend 65%. Uh, in reality, that might be 75%. <laughs> so maybe the, the reference consumption here is not uh, correct. Yeah. One reason why I bet the route planner is not uh, that spot on right now is because I don't have live data connection to the car. So I bet the route planner just had to guess based on a generic soul, not this actual soul. So yeah, once I get uh, live data connection, um, then it should be a lot better estimation. But uh, I have to wait for a new OBD dongle to arrive. But that means that I might want to go for 85% now. Uh, we're not losing that much time uh, or charging speed to go to 85%. Okay, so uh, I think we need one more charging stop. Consumption so far is 171. And according to a better route planner, uh, on the way up to Yale, we're supposed to average 191 watt hour per kilometer, and on the way down, 170. No, wait, uh, yeah, 170 something, 72, which means that the, the average, according to by the route plan, is 182. So right now we are below the average of what is claimed. So we'll see by the time we get back home what it is then. And then you see distance here is 360. So you know what I'm gonna do is that this whole trip here is 470 kilometers. So I'm going to take an extra loop so that we actually finish at 500 kilometers. And this will be like the slow 500 kilometer challenge. And I want to know how long does it take then it should be significantly slower than the motorway 500 kilometer challenge. So right now we are at 47 degrees in the max. Uh, we still haven't hit any rapid gate yet. So we'll see on the last session then at the Rua what's going to happen then. We are now at Shell Rua. This is usually the bailout point for the Hemsedal uh, test I do. But uh, yes, finally we get some proper speed here at Kemp Power, 172 amp. We went deep <laughs> to around 7%, but we made it here. Okay, but um, you see, like I mentioned earlier, as a nice bonus, we're gonna go to 500 kilometers. That means I have to drive another 70 or 68 kilometers. So that means that I probably have to go to 80% again. Ooh. And the battery is getting hot-ish, but well, 40 degrees. Okay, we have fan with nine and I have eight back off. So I don't know what's up with this, but uh, yeah, we should be able to charge the last session also without the rapid gate. We will see. So now the plan is to drive. Uh, let me see if I uh, do this nav route stop guidance. Okay, uh, I'm going to do this, but it's a little bit complex. I'm going to go. No, not Hagon. Here, cleavage. Here, I'm going to go over here like normal, but then normally I would go home, right? In a normal. Uh, yellow test but this time i will enter the motorway and then drive over to dal and then drive back and that should be 500 kilometers <laughs> so we'll see yeah how it goes oh man we are back on the road and the the adapter bugged at 77 percent it stopped charging ideally i wanted to go to around 85 percent i was getting good speed but okay, whatever. Uh, I have to figure out if I need one more stop or not. I might want to go for one more stop. We'll see. But now we just have to travel past the traffic and also <laughs> and all that. And they're going slightly slower than optimal. But uh, yeah, fortunately, most of the traffic here, they're going to go straight and we're going to exit soon. So this will be a little fun uh, 500 kilometer challenge also as a bonus. The sun has entered the chat. Oh, but okay. 
So you see, I have HVAC off right now. It's eight degrees Celsius outside. And I actually get sufficient heat from the sun. So this is interesting because the way we count now is that uh, if this would be a 500 kilometer challenge, right? Is that uh, you take the current time, add 45 minutes, that is the current 500 kilometer time, which means that we basically hit the seven hour and five minute mark, which is the time that this car is needed to finish 500 kilometer on the motorway. But in this case, we still have to drive another 50 kilometers. <laughs> so it is slower to drive slow. That's what I've been claiming all this time, but now we can actually prove it. So we just have to see how much slower is it. Yeah, it ain't over yet. Let's do the countdown. This is so weird. I have 5% battery left. I'm almost out of juice. Okay, we say, oh, can we see that number even? It's so hard to see it. Okay, 4995, 4996, 4997, 4998, 4999, look at the average speed, 79 kilometers per hour only. <laughs> 500 time 652 we have to add 45 minutes it becomes seven hours and 30 minutes oh no no, no. 735 yeah so that is half an hour slower than the rapid gate motorway run <laughs> okay okay i made it here so now i'm gonna bail out uh, i actually don't have enough juice to go home i have to once again go over to camp power <laughs> and juice up before i can go home oh shit the sun has entered the chat oh, in my face oh yeah we are charging once again at camp power yeah camp power and tesla they seem to be the most stable actually camp power being the best because they are provide 173 amp whereas tesla only 163 ish look at this even at the last charging stop, even after some hammering, we are not rapid gating. <laughs> Noise. But okay, I'm gonna do the donation shout out again. I live stream and there are people donating money to me. So, uh, Julian, big thumbs up. He tipped 50 euros. Danke schön. And then RM donated uh, 11, no, 11.99 euros to Superjat. Yeah, that's it. Those two guys. So, Thank you very much. And then when it comes to the average uh, charging price, I will also provide that. I have to calculate afterwards. But yeah, so I'm gonna conclude now this trip. I wanted to find out if the battery overheated and it seems like when you're driving on B roads, typical Norwegian roads, like from Oslo to Bergen or whatever, uh, as long as you're not hammering on the motorway all the time, you will actually not rapid gate. Even when you're using the adapter, right? It's over there and I'm gonna show you, but. So that's cool. It means that uh, you can actually buy this adapter and you can achieve faster charging. Um, the reason why it uh, didn't overheat was that the car was restricted by the speed limit. And I even went 10% over the speed limit. So yeah, the car was empty, but uh, extra weight in the car doesn't affect the consumption that much. But 10%, going 10% over the speed limit does a pretty significant impact on the consumption so i already feel like i stress tested the car enough and it still didn't overheat so yeah uh, the limitation with the car's cooling system is uh, when, once you go on the motorway so as long as you don't hammer that hard that long or something then yeah but also you see that the difference here this is also another thing i wanted to prove with this extra test at the end is that some people claim that when you go slower, you will arrive faster because you don't replicate. Well, we did not replicate at all today. We had really perfect charging sessions, but because we drove so slow, we did arrive slower, half an hour slower than the rapid gate uh, motorway run. So I believe that the sweet spot might be around 110 kilometers per hour because I did cruise 117 for the majority of the session, the previous run. So yeah, that, that's just the, the combination of how fast this car charges, how it can cool stuff, how much it consumes, the battery size and everything. 
that seems to be the case. But I'm not going to retest this even one more time. I think this is good enough. And then we can just, yeah, let it be now. And then uh, what's going to happen with the whole active cooling stuff here? I don't know, but eventually this box, wait, I cannot lift it maybe. This emergency box here, I want to try it on the Classic Ionic. I need to find out if it works on Classic Ionic or not. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. Uh, and then maybe if it works on Classic Ionic, I could try to retest Classic Ionic. Hmm. Okay, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.